comes from. I can use that at least through mid November. Oh Oh, man, I'm sorry. Trunk or treat just really got to my car. All right. Well, my Halloween festivities were my daughter actually had on Monday had soccer practice. They did dress up for soccer practice, but that's all. And then I heard that our um, Home Depot <laughs> was was doing trick or treating, so it was just Ren and I. And I was like, you know what? I'm I did everything with Mila, so I was like, we're gonna just we're just gonna go do trick or treat at Home Depot, Ren. Uh-huh. Did we do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you dress have up you like- ever done those like building classes that they have at Home Depot for kids? No, but I've been hearing about them, like that oh. they're super fun. My kids, we did that. It's like one Saturday a month, and we would go and do it. And they made birdhouses and picture frames, and I mean, all kinds of cool stuff. There's one time they made like a like a shelf or something for matchbox cars, and my youngest was really you know excited about that but that's awesome yeah but you can actually ask them to go like if you can't do it there you can pick up a oh really yeah that's cool yeah i mean it's like three minutes from our house we're gonna have to go yeah oh there was one at lowe's too we never did that one we always did the home depot you get lowe's aprons how cute (laughs) I love that. I would love to see my kids in little loaves of aprons. <laughs> All right. Well, shall we do biology, I suppose? If we must, since we if are behind. We must. <laughs> so yesterday we talked about how with cellular respiration and photosynthesis, it's like an input output process. So I said it's kind of like this gumball machine where you stick in a quarter and in exchange for that quarter, right, there's a process that happens. You have to put the quarter in, you have to turn the quarter, and then you get your gumball out. What are some other things that are input, output, either devices or processes? Think about we to think, and don't tell me science things. I want you to think about things that you know. Ooh, charging a phone. Don't we all do that? <laughs> yes, right? So we have to, we have our phone. Once we put it on the charger, it we receive a full device. That's awesome. Pay money for groceries. Good. So we come in with money right? We walk around the store. Our mind is tempted (laughs) by all the things we need and we don't need. And then we come out, right? We exchange those. Ah, yes. Better in the oven. Brownies come out. That probably is one of my favorite desserts ever. Good morning, day. Good charging a computer. What else are some input output things? This is maybe I could think about my uh, my espresso machine, right? It starts as coffee beans. Then the middle process is it get the beans get ground. And then the next process is I move it over and I it runs hot water over them and it makes a shot of espresso, right? So it starts as a bean and ends up as something delicious in my cup. (laughs) Good. So let's review where we're headed today. So we're in the same spot as we were yesterday because we started this yesterday. um, But we want to end today with a more solid understanding of this. Based on some of your quizzes, it was probably our lowest quiz and which I said you didn't have to do it yesterday right because we weren't quite finished I want to say we had like an 80 percent average so that tells me we weren't quite ready I want to say most of all of our average quiz scores were over 90 
So what I do want you to do is if you've already taken it, please go back today and take it again, okay? Because you can retake it. Awesome. So let me look who's here and who would like to read. I'd like somebody new to read today. Is anybody willing to read that has never read today? Well, I guess Hope shall because her hand is up. I'll lower mine oh. so that Hope can read. Yep. So Hope, do you mind reading? Um, you want to just read all of those today? Since we don't ha we don't get to hear you often, I'd love to hear you read our objectives for today. Yeah, I can. Thank um, you. Explain how reactant and products are cellular respiration are more important uh, to lig <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> Explain how reactant and products of cellular respiration are important to living organisms. What is the formula for photosynthesis? What gas is produced in photosynthesis? And where does photosynthesis take place inside the cell? That was so good. I'm telling you, this is, you know how much I get caught up on my words. <laughs> I feel like every single morning I'm like tripping. You did a great job. Thank you so much, Hope. I love it. So good. So we're going to be, again, back down here on the bottom of this triangle. What we're really working on is firming up our understanding of photosynthesis today. So when you leave today, the goal is that you would be able to explain how photosynthesis works, just like you were able to explain to me the three parts of cellular respiration, which are what? It's the first part of cellular respiration that happens in the cytoplasm. What is it? It is glycolysis. And Riker, you're right. The second part of cellular respiration is Krebs cycle. And then, yes, Arya, yes. The third part, everyone, is the electron transport chain. Okay, so tell me what you remember about yesterday. What do you remember about photosynthesis from yesterday? It takes place in the in the chloroplast. It it, it has several stages. Good. Stomata, good. What do our stomata do? What are they like in the house? What did I compare them to? The stomata, they what? The last couple of days have been so beautiful. I've been opening my windows late afternoon, evening. Yep, they're the windows of the cell. We open those up to get sunlight and to get carbon dioxide through the pores of the cell called Little window is called stomata. Good. Awesome. Well, let's take it back to phase one. All right. So stage one, all right, is when light energy is captured by the chloroplast or chloroplast, the chlorophyll and the thylakoids. So the chlorophyll is the actual jelly. And what is the thylakoid? What did we compare them to yesterday? What are those thylakoids? What do they look like inside the cell? I compare them to something we eat, not the normal color. Not a brownie, but that's a good guess because I, <laughs> yes, remember pancakes. Here are our thylakoids. It's a stack of green pancakes. We have a stack of green pancakes, and that is our thylakoid, and that is step one of photosynthesis. It is the light harvesting part of photosynthesis. Now, you'll find this interesting, okay? What color are most of our plants when they are living outside? Green. Right? We associate plants very commonly with green. So if I asked you what color of light the, the plant, the chlorophyll absorbed, what would you naturally maybe go to say? 
You might go to say what? I would think green, right? Oh yeah, green. But remember how we talked about reflection and refraction yesterday? The color we see is actually the color that is reflected, not absorbed. So the green color is actually reflected. The color that the plants co collect are blue and red. We can remember that our, our plants are patriotic. <laughs> okay, so forget the white, but red and blue, right? Think of a flag. What colors does the plant absorb in that chlorophyll? It is going to be your red and blue. All right. As chlorophyll stops being produced. Okay. So as that cell, why would the, what would happen when the chlorophyll stops being produced? Why would chlorophyll stop being produced inside of our thylakoids? Why would we not use chlorophyll? We need chlorophyll to make energy and we need energy to do everything. Why would we not have chlorophyll? I like the way you're thinking because you're thinking thought fall. So you're thinking cooler temps. You're thinking no sun. What happens to our leaves in the fall? Essentially, they die, right? So when we see these leaves changing color, it's actually a, a beautiful way of watching them die. Okay, because the chlorophyll in their in their leaves is is deteriorating. Yeah. So this dying process is actually what makes fall so beautiful. Which I kind of appreciate. There's being something beautiful, beautiful. but Sorry. leaves are dying. How are they? How is that beautiful? I'm just kidding. You know. Sorry, I know Ren was sitting next to me, snuggling the cat. Clearly. The cat oh, the snuggling. cons of working at home. Oh no, I don't mind it one bit. So, so yes, yeah, so that is why in the fall our leaves change color. So you can impress somebody today. And be like, why is it? Why are the leaves so beautiful in the fall? You know, and and explain that it's actually because the chlorophyll, the leaf is dying, the chlorophyll is drying up, and therefore we're seeing those colors be reflected that sometimes are absorbed, like those reds that are shining through. Instead of being absorbed, they're actually being expressed. All right, that was a beautiful, beautiful segue. But the long story is. What colors does our plant need to absorb? What light colors, light, light wave colors of the rainbow? Which two? It reflects green. Good. It reflects green. But what colors does it absorb? Yep. Perfect. Red and blue. So those red and blue lights in stage one are absorbed. So this is what is called the light dependent reaction. Well, why is it the light dependent reaction? Well, it depends on the light, right? We can't absorb red and blue energy waves if we don't have sunlight to do it. So we need that light to give us that red and white, that red and blue light waves, stage one. Step two. Step two, we are going to see that inside our thylakoid, those, um, those bonds are broken and energy is released, right? This is the first chopping process. Just like in cellular respiration, what do we, what do we chop into a thousand pieces? What molecule do we chop into a thousand pieces in cellular respiration in the mitochondria? Yes, Pip. Yes, Hope. Yes, Faith. Glucose. Remember, in cellular respiration, we eat we eat carbohydrates, which is a form of glucose, and our cells take that glucose and chop it in two, and chop it in four, and chop it in six. 
All right, and this is the chopping process in photosynthesis, okay? So we are taking the stored energy from that sunlight that when it is reflected in the chlorophyll or refracted in the chlorophyll, when that red and blue light is refracted, energy is released. And what do we create in step two? In the light-dependent reaction. Two things. We talked about these yesterday. What are we building? ATP, good, Riker, and NADPH. All right? Why do we want NADPH? We made a bunch of this in cellular respiration in the Krebs cycle. Why do we know the value of NADPH now? Why is NADPH valuable? We had NADP and we attached a hydrogen molecule. What's the value of that? Good, Dustin. It's an electron carrier, meaning that that hydrogen bond, what happens when that hydrogen bonds to NADPH? Is that hydrogen bond strong or weak? Good, it's weak. And that's why Dustin called it a, an electron carrier because it's carrying that molecule with the intention of breaking it. All right, just like Ms. Schmidt said with brownies at the beginning, when you make brownies, they come out in one giant piece, right? <laughs> you make your brownie mix and it, it at first is one giant piece. It's not until you break that brownie that you have, it kind of multiplies. And it's the same thing with this NADPH, right? So this is step two. In the light dependent reaction, there are two stages. We absorb the red and blue, we refract it, and then we use that energy to make ATP and NADPH. How are we feeling? I feel like we, we slowly covered these things generically yesterday so that today we can add a little bit more detail to them and hopefully firm up our understanding. If there is a methase, which there are several, and that's fine, because I said this is, biology is getting hard, and it's going to take some time for these processes to sink in. But if you have a methase right now, give me something in chat that, that can help me help you. If there's a misunderstanding or something you're confused with that we can talk about right now to change that face... Raise your hand, type in chat, tell me how I can help clarify your understanding. Pip, go ahead and write that in chat. Well, just a bit of a, I'm gonna actually add it on mic. Uh, sorry if you're here, my dog, my aunt is here. Um, so okay, well, go ahead and add it in chat then if you've got a lot of background noise. It's okay, I'm fine with it. So, you know, so what was the question you were asking again? Well, how do you have an, an answer if you don't know? Well, I like everyone saying, a lot of information at once. Like you can just, you know, just break it down and go piece sure. by piece. Sure. Okay. So, right. Right. Okay. So if you guys have a specific question, go ahead and write that in chat. Well, this is that, helpful, Aria. So okay. Fine. So I don't really understand step two like the cycle. All right. So let's break it down. Let's draw pictures. When I don't understand, I draw pictures. All right. So let's draw pictures. Let me get a whiteboard out and let's draw some pictures. I understand that hope because that's sometimes what happens to me too. And that's why I said it's going to be really important. Your, your understanding of this is going to be greatly affected by how much time we spend in this content because it is it is hard okay all right so let's draw a picture yes reading the lesson really helps and aria this helps me too when i know what what you need 
So this is going to be one thylakoid. All right, this is one thylakoid. So what comes into the cell in step one? Who can tell me what comes into the cell in step one? Ooh, my chat's behind. Hold on one second. I know. See, I'm telling you, I did this in every lesson, even in college. Good. Light. So let's talk about light. What colors come in? Hint my, hints my. What colors are absorbed? Red. Good. And blue. So these actually represent the light waves coming into the thylakoid. Now, what is the jelly filling inside our thylakoid? What is that called again? Who can help me with that? Oh, that's my eraser. What am I doing? There we go. Yes, chlorophyll. Grana is, a, that is an awesome word to use. Grana is a, your stack of pancakes. So a stack of thylakoids are called grana. All right. So this green down here is the chlorophyll. How do we feel with this so far? Are we following with this okay? Give me that in chat. All right. Give me that in poll. Are we following to this point okay? All right. So here is our chlorophyll. I probably didn't spell that right. I'm sure I didn't. Oh my goodness. I can't. There. I'm just missing an L. Okay, good. Um, all right. So there's our chlorophyll. Step one is the light collecting. So let's put, well, Aria, do you want to write step one outside right here? Will you write step one for me? All right, so step one is the light is collected. It's like the harvest, right? The harvesting of light. And I think it was Dustin that might have also said you're going to also gather your carbon dioxide too with those windows. All right. Here we're going to get what happens to these red and blue, um, these red and blue light waves when they come into the thylakoid. Reflection is when it, they bounce right back out. All right, that's what happens to the green. All right, the green waves. So the green sunlight does hit the thylakoid, but what the green does is it bounces right back off proportionally. Okay. I don't know if that's exact, but it's close. Okay. What happens when you need to get your cat? It's scratching the chair. The red does something different. Instead of reflecting, it is what we call refracts. So we're going to do this. All right. So what happens to that red light, and this is step two, is that that red light, see how it doesn't reflect at the same angle? This thylakoid, the chlorophyll, changes the direction of the wave. And when it changes the direction of the wave, did it actually slows this down. Did you know that? When you change the direction of light, it slows down the speed of the wave. And when you slow something down, just like when you pump the brake of your car, what happens? When I pump the brake of my car, it's it's stopping my car. It's harnessing some energy, right? It's pulling back some of the energy. So when that happens, when it slows that, when it slows down that light wave down, guess what we capture? It doesn't, the energy doesn't just disappear. There's energy that's dispersed. 
okay? We capture energy in that process. When we slow down that white, that red and blue wave, that is where we capture energy. It's like a trick, all right? Speaking of trick or treat. It's like, oh, come in here. We have some fun chlorophyll. It's a light party in here. All right. And then when that red wave comes in, it's like, ha, 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 I tricked you. All right. Now, ultimately, the light wave still gets away, right? But it doesn't get away without a penalty. It still slows that down. Does that make sense? Give me a green and... Does that make sense? When we slow down and change the direction of our light waves, that's where we capture energy. We're capturing the red and blue light energy because that chlorophyll changes the direction of our red and blue waves. It doesn't the green, it doesn't yellow, it doesn't orange only red and blue. Okay. What does that mean? All right. Well, that energy now is floating around in the, um, chloroplast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So this energy is hanging out in the chloroplast. Guess what else is hanging around in the chloroplast? There are two other molecules that are hanging out waiting. So the chlorophyll slows down both the red and blue waves. Absolutely, Aria. Yep, that is correct. And when it slows it down, we capture that energy. And there's two molecules waiting. There's NAD or ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and phosphates waiting. Okay, those two things are waiting. And then there's another pair of molecules waiting around for that energy. It is N, A, D, P, and H. Hydrogen. N, A, D, P, and hydrogen. These molecules are just floating around in the chloroplast waiting. They're waiting. And when that energy is captured, okay, when that energy is captured, look right here where that captured energy goes. We use that energy to create a bond between NADP. And what does that make? When we bond the NADP and the hydrogen molecule, what do we make? NADP. Good, guys. H, NADPH. We make NADPH, and we also use that captured energy to bond ADP or ADP to another phosphate. So instead of adenosine diphosphate, we get adenosine triphosphate, which is what our cells need for energy, A. So the second step that we were starting to wonder and question ourselves, our second step is this right here. Taking that captured energy and making ATP and NADPH. Yes, Ireland! It's, yes, it's very similar to Krebs. I love that you said that, Dustin. It's very similar to Krebs cycle. The light, it's called the light dependent reaction. And we can remember that, right? Because we need that light, the red, let's do it. This is light dependent. Oh, I was going to do blue, but whatever. Light dependent. Oh, it changed it. The light dependent reaction. It's because we use that light that comes in in step one. We cannot do any of this without the energy capture, okay? We can't do any of this without the energy capture that haps happens in this refracting of light, which doesn't this make so much more sense that this is why you have to do physical science before you come to biology. 
Do you see how your physical science knowledge of understanding reflection and refraction comes together? And that when you refract light, you slow it down and you lose energy by remembering that or being reminded of that. <laughs> this is what helps us in biology understand how photosynthesis works. How do we feel about step two now? See, look at us. And I guarantee you, if you're still meh or a naysayer, which we don't really have any of them yet, which, and it's fine if you still don't get it, really, truly. This is only our second lesson on it. But this is what I'm saying. What we did today is the what I would call getting out your Crayola markers at home <laughs> and making your own notes. We just made our own notes right here, our own flow chart, our own whatever, our own pictures of, of the notes that we actually read. Sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Schmidt. Yep, the green light is being reflected. That's why it's not absorbed. We don't use that. So like we could technically do orange light is reflected, yellow light is reflected, black light. I guess black is the absence of light, but what, any other color, right, is going to be just bounced off. But primarily that green. Awesome. We are having better percentages. Any other meh faces that have a question that I can clarify about this process? If not, this is what I recommend, okay? I recommend you go today after class, this afternoon when your classes are over, and you make this diagram. You're like, well, Mrs. Rittenhouse, you did it. It makes sense for me how you did it. That's fine. Snip it and draw the same thing with your handwriting and your colored pencils or markers or whatever. That is going to help cement this in your mind. Okay? It really is. Call me crazy, but it, it works. Okay? And that's why I literally got through college <laughs> by making making drawings like this, right? That is all what happened here in the light dependent stage, okay? This is the input we took in. Chlor we had chlorophyll, we had sunlight, and we had water. And what did we get out? We're getting oxygen out as waste and NADPH and ATP, okay? Really quickly to step three, because we're losing time. I want to get here. So light dependent reaction happens. All right. This is what we make. This is what we get. Just like your brownie batter, right? We mix it in the kitchen counter. It comes from some ingredients. We make a batter. And then we also take these ingredients, just like we took them from the Krebs cycle to the electron transport chain. We are not done. All right. There is a third step. All right, and this is called the light independent reaction. Independent means I can do it by myself, right? What do you think this might mean? If the first one depended on light and this one is called the independent, does it means it doesn't need light. When do you think the Calvin cycle happens? If it doesn't need light. Yes. Yes. Good. So the light independent reaction happens at night because at nighttime, does our, can our chloroplasts be absorbing red and blue light? No, our light source disappears. All right. So that's why it's important that during the day they do the light dependent stage and collect, 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 collect that red and blue light and make a stockpile of this NADPH. Because look, we move into what we call the Calvin cycle. And that is what happens at nighttime. 
All right, we're going to use the carbon dioxide from the air. We're still going to use that carbon dioxide. And we're going to use what we make from the light dependent reaction to more make more energy. Does that make sense? We're going to take the process and this we're not going to go through wholeheartedly right now, but it is just like the Krebs cycle. Look, 2 NADPH. What do they lose down here? What gets chopped off? Right? Yep. We're chopping up those NADPHs. And when you chop up those NADPHs, what is released? Energy is released. And we can bond our adenosine diphosphate to another phosphate and make ATP. So I don't want you to remember all these little things. I want you to remember that the light independent reaction is the dark reaction, what happens at night. And we're taking all that NADPH that we made during the day and we're chopping off those hydrogens, right? Chopping off those hydrogens to make ATP. Woo! How do we feel? How do we feel? That is photosynthesis in entirety. I'm getting a lot of happy faces coming in. I'm getting some meh faces, which is, like I said, to be expected. This is hard content. And not just to the meh faces, but to everyone, I say, take this home tonight and make yourself some pictures and diagrams. If you are not a picture and diagram person, then read. <laughs> yes, lots of vocabulary. So what I was looking. Yep, so this is ATP that's made, Ireland. Yep. So it says, see how it says ADP plus P? This is from the chopping process. As things are chopped that we make. Yeah, make a song. I don't get, use the things that make the most sense to you. So let's do this. Where does photosynthesis take place in the cell? So where does photosynthesis take place? Of all 67 of you, please more than 17 of you participate. Let's check your understanding. A lot of time these quick check questions, wink, wink, are your quiz questions. Thank me later. Thank me later. Yes. Good. The answer is it happens in the chloroplast, right? That is the energy power plant of the plant cell. It happens in the chloroplast. What do you notice about the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? We hit hard on this yesterday. What is the, the relationship? Do they have the same products? Do they have the same reactants? Do they have the opposite reactions or do they happen in the same organelles? We talked about how they are the perfect harmony between plants and animals because of the provision that they provide one another. Yes, Dustin, you're right on. I would say the one thing that some of you might be migrating towards A and B with when it says same is there are some of the same components. They are, there are similar components. They do ATP, both make ATP, and they both do have some of the same products and reactants. Well, I shouldn't say products or have the same ingredients on both sides, but ultimately it is C, C, right? What photosynthesis makes, all right, so what is the, rea uh, the products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. And then the products of cellular respiration are the reactants of photosynthesis. They're opposites, okay? Good.
So the answer to that would be C. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let's check ourselves. Explain reactants and products. Um, we talked about we talked about that just now, right? The formula for photosynthesis, what's produced in photosynthesis and where photosynthesis takes place. How do you feel? Let's do our arrows. Did we cover these things today? Give me your arrows. Give me your arrows. And last but not least, I am not saying this for any other reason, but biology is getting hard and this is getting hard and this is stuff that you will be tested on in the spring and i don't say that to panic you i tell you that the time that you put in now in cementing this in your mind is going to pay off in the spring when we really make this make sense when we take these words and make flashcards and we're like oh yeah our nadph our nafadph yeah that's what i chop up to make energy that's what I chop up to make ATP. What is ATP? Oh, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. That's what my cell needs for energy. Maybe you're going to play this game. Maybe you're going to read. Maybe you're going to retake that test. I think you should. Maybe you're going to come back and watch this recording and make your own flowchart while you watch the recording. What a great idea. I need to know what you're going to do because doing nothing is not going to cut it. We have to keep pushing ourselves. It's what I teach you is part of it, but what you do with it is the other part. We're a team. Okay. And I can't help you learn this without you helping you learn this too. Yes. Riker. So pumped. All right. That's what I have for you today. Super exciting. Um, please make sure that quiz is taken. Please finish up your cell projects. We're getting close to the end of the unit, okay? And if you have any questions, stick around. If not, you are.